welcome to our ExaQuantum training video. In this two-part video, we provide a clear and concise step-by-step -step guide on how to import Centum graphics into ExaQuantum web. Part one, we saw how the DCS graphic was converted into an intermediate format and copied across to the ExaQuantum server. In part two, we show how to convert either single or bulk graphics into an ExaQuantum web graphic and how to load the graphics in the database so that they can be viewed by ExaQuantum web client. We are now logged in to the ExaQuantum server as a user in the ExaQuantum Explorer design group. And as you can see, the intermediate formatted files we produced on the Centum His are available here. It is possible to perform graphics conversion on an ExaQuantum Explorer client if the components are installed, but not on a web client. Graphics conversion is normally performed on the XQuantum server. DCS graphics can be converted into two different formats in XQuantum, one for use by XQuantum Explorer client and one for use by XQuantum web client. In this video, we're going to create files for deployment to XQuantum web. Importing graphics into XQuantum Explorer will be covered in a video discussing the use of the XQuantum graphical framework application. There are also two different types of graphic conversion individual conversion and bulk conversion. In this video, we will look at both types. Let us first consider converting a single DCS graphic. We are again going to use the distillation column graphic as the example. The aim is to have a graphic that can be viewed in XQuantum Web. So to begin with, I need to open the XQuantum Graphics Editor from the Start menu. Once loaded, to start the conversion, I use the Import option from the File menu. This presents me with another menu which contains three options. The Import Explorer document allows conversion of a graphic created using XQuantum Explorer to be converted into an XQuantum web graphic. The Import His Graphic option would be used to directly import a graphic from a Centum 3000 His station. This requires network and security access to the engineering workstation of the DCS. And Import SVG file which will convert the intermediate SVG format we create on the HIS into the internal XQuantum graphic format known as PXG. So I select the Import SVG option, which opens up another dialog. At this point, I can choose if I want to change the size of the creative graphic. I can actually make it bigger or smaller than the original if required. However, it is recommended to create the graphic with 100% ratio to start with. If necessary, you can re-import the SVG file and change it to suit your requirement. In this example, I will leave this at 100%. Now I use the button to select the file I wish to convert from the folder I showed earlier and click open. The path to the file now appears in the associated field. The final group in the dialog allows me to select information about the XQuantum server and OPC server from which the tag mappings will be extracted. As I am running on a server, the server field is greyed out. This is only required when running the tool on an XQuantum Explorer client. The OPC server name is always required, although it is possible to use SQL Server wildcard characters to allow searches across multiple OPC servers. The tag mapping is performed by comparing the DCS tag and data item names with the OPC item ID fields of the items stored in the configuration database of the specified XQuantum server. It will only return a match if it matches the OPC server name specified. If the OPC item ID is used in more than one XQuantum tag, then it will be the first configured of these tags that will be returned, as the search will stop as soon as a match is found. If no match is found for any data item found in the DCS graphic, then by default, all usage of that item in the XQuantum graphic will be removed to ensure that a valid graphic is produced. ExaQuantum tags must already exist for all items in the DCS graphic to ensure that all the dynamics are converted. If other tags are added later, then the graphic will need to be re-imported in order to include any stripped dynamic. Once the graphic has been imported, you can check which tags have been found and which have not by using the two files which have been created in the user's temp folder. They will have names which end with underscore mapped and underscore missing. Any reference in the graphic to tags in the underscore missing file will have been removed. The simplest way to access the temp folder 
is to start Windows File Explorer and enter percentage temp percentage in the path field at the top of the dialog and press enter. For tags in the underscore mapped file, it is possible to check that they have been configured correctly by using the variable dialog accessible via the graphics menu. All the locations where a tag is used can be seen using the two dependency options. The show document dependency option will highlight where a variable is used in the document itself and the dependency option will display a dependency dialog which will show you all the objects where the selected variable or variables are used. The contents of this dialog can be printed for checking or for documentation purposes. If you are happy with the results, you can save this as an XQuantum graphic or PXG file, which could then be loaded and edited without the need for rerunning the conversion. However, before we can use the file in XQuantum Web, we need to convert this back into the final SVG format. This is done using the Save as Web Page option from the File menu or clicking the Save as Web Page icon on the toolbar. So that is how to convert a single DCS graphic. However, before we look at loading the converted XQuantum web page so that it can be viewed from an XQuantum web client, let us consider the situation where there are a large number of graphics that need to be converted. For this, we need to use a tool known as the Bulk Graphics Conversion Tool. This tool is one of the many developer tools supplied with XQuantum. These tools need to be launched in the Windows File Explorer. The Bulk Graphic Conversion Tool can be found in a subfolder of the Developer Tools folder under where the XQuantum software was installed. By default, this is located in the C drive under the Program Files. Using Windows File Explorer, navigate to this folder and double-click on the application, indicated by the light blue square icon. The first group at the top of the file is similar to the fields of the single file conversion details. We use the HIS 0162 OPT server and 100% resize ratio. The middle group is similar to the DCS graphic conversion tool. In this case, I'm going to select the folder I used earlier. The last group of the dialog selects which output format or format to use and the location where the resultant files are to be placed. Finally, click on the convert button commence the conversion process. Once this is complete, you can view the logs which can be accessed by clicking on the View Log button. Next, to load the graphics in the database so that they can be viewed by XQuantum Web clients, start Internet Explorer and launch the XQuantum Web homepage by entering the appropriate URL. XQuantum Web is a secure website. Internet Explorer will by default prompt for a username and password. If allowed by IT security, it is possible to configure Internet Explorer to automatically log in using the current username and password. In XQuantum Web, graphics are referred to as mimics, and therefore we are going to add a new mimic. The simplest way of doing this is to select the new mimic option from the mimics menu. This will then display the new Mimics page. Give the Mimic a name which must be unique. You also have the option to add a description if necessary. Then click the Browse button. Navigate to where the web pages were created and select the required SVG file and click the OK button. This will upload the file to XQuantum Web and add it to the Mimic list which is now displayed. To view a Mimic, simply click on its name. We now have the DCS distillation column graphic running as a web page in X Quantum Web. This concludes part two of the video showing how to convert either single or bulk graphics into an X Quantum Web graphic and how to load the graphics in the database so that they can be viewed by X Quantum Web clients. You can view these and all of our how to videos on our YouTube channel. We hope that you found this video interesting and informative, and thank you for watching.